This video is all about logic. So what is logic? Well, logic is used to make decisions. The decisions we make are determined by rules that we know about the world, and the decisions are often based on whether these rules are true or false in a given situation. So if you think about it, if you saw a nail sticking up from a piece of wood, you would decide to avoid it. And why would you decide to avoid it? Well, because you know that as a rule, nails are sharp and sharp objects pierce our skin. So in other words, it would hurt us, it would cut us, so we avoid it. So these two facts that we know in this circumstance, because they're both true, we know that the result would be that it would almost certainly cause us injury. So we use the truth of rules to make decisions. Nails are sharp, that's true in this situation. Sharp objects pierce our skin, well that's true. So therefore, we know that our skin would get damaged if we stepped on that nail. So we think using logic. We input knowledge about the world and decide upon an output accordingly. And human logic, it you know works with these rules, with these facts, statements that are either true or false. And computers have been designed to do exactly the same thing. Binary logic is what a CPU will do to make decisions based on the inputs that it receives. So like us, a CPU will take inputs which might be true or false. So um, a one or a zero, and make a decision which is based, uh, which will produce a particular output. So there are very few logic operations that a CPU will actually perform on inputs, but the combination of these different logical operations can lead to really complex calculations. So the logic operations that a CPU perform, it performs the not operation, the and operation, and the or operation. And there are a few others, but you don't need to know about them for GCSE. And ele electronic engineers, they developed components that carry out the AND, the OR, and the NOT logic operations. And the CPU is full of millions and millions of them, all arranged in different combinations. So let's now have a look to see how CPUs make these logical decisions. So inside your CPU, you've got lots of components uh, known as logic gates. They're made up of transistors, uh, transistor switches arranged in particular ways, and because they're so small, we use uh, three symbols to represent these three logic gates. So the first logic gate we'll have a look at is the NOT gate. So this is a triangle with a little circle at the end, and it basically will reverse or negate any input it receives. So if it receives a one, then it will output a zero. If the input is a zero, then it will output a one. So, and as we go forward, just recognize that a one is logic true and zero is logic false. So the shorthand of writing this is Q is the output is equal to not A, where A is the input. So it does not have to be A or Q. You could use any letter, but Q is a popular choice when it comes to describing the outputs of logic gates. Okay, the AND operation. So this is um, another one of the um, operations that the CPU can do, and it is denoted by this symbol. So the AND gate, um, I always think of it as looking like a D, and um, AND finishes with a D, so that's how I remember it. Uh, so the AND gate will take two inputs and produce a single output. And the rule for this gate is that if both A and B are true, so if they're both ones going in, then the output will be one. If one of the inputs is, uh, if only one of the inputs is one, or if they're both zero, then the output will be zero. So the shorthand is Q equals A and B. And then the final gate that we need to know about is the OR gate. So this is the OR gate, looks a little bit like a half moon. And the OR gate will take two inputs and produce a single output, just like the AND gate, but this rule is slightly different. If either of the inputs or both of the inputs are true, are one, then the output will also be true. So you can see here that we've got examples where they're both one, both the inputs are one and the output is one. Uh, we've got examples where either A or B are one, the output is one, whereas when both A and B are zero, the output is zero. And the shorthand is Q equals A or B. Now truth tables, are used to work out the different combinations of inputs 
and what the outputs will be in those circumstances. So if we think about a truth table for a NOT gate, what are the different inputs that a NOT gate could receive? Well, because there's only one input, it could receive a 1 and it could receive a 0. And if it receives a 1, then the output would be 0. And if it receives a 0, the output would be 1. So that is a truth table for a NOT gate. For an AND gate, there are two inputs. So we're going to have different possible combinations now, um, or more possible combinations, of inputs. So we could have a situation where both the inputs are 1, in which case the output would be 1. We could have a situation where A is 1 and B is 0, in which case the output would be 0. We could have a combination where A is 0 and B is 1, so A is false and B is true. The output again would be 0 there. And we could have a situation where both the inputs are false, where the, the output would be false from this gate in that circumstance. And with an OR gate, it's the same combinations of inputs. We could have A and B being 1, in which case the output would be 1. We could have A being 1 and B being 0, that would result in a 1. We could have A being 0, B being 1, that would result in the output of 1. And we could have A and B both being 0, which would result in the output being 0. So that is an example of um, a truth table for an OR gate. Now, quite often in your GCSEs, you'll be given a logic circuit, which is a combination of these gates. They're sort of joined up. And what you'd be asked to do is look at a circuit and produce a truth table for the inputs and the outputs. So let's have a look to see how we could do it. So first of all, whenever you get a logic circuit, I'd always label the inputs and I'd label the output. I'd also maybe uh, label some intermediate outputs as well because this has an AND gate which would produce an output which will be the input for the NOT gate. So I've got my outputs, I've got my inputs all labelled and then I'd start to draw my truth table. So the inputs for the truth table are A and B and I've got two outputs here. I've got the output of the AND gate and I've got the output of the NOT. So what are the combination of inputs I could have? Well, I could have A and B being 1. I could have A being 1, B being 0. A being 0, B being 1. And both A and B being 0. So in this first row, if A and B are 1, then the output of the AND gate would be 1. Otherwise, the outputs would be 0. And now if we focus solely on this NOT gate, where Q is the input and P is the output, we've got the input being either 1, or 0, or 0, or 0 for each of those rows. So if Q is 1, then the output will be 0. If Q is 0, the output will be 1. And that is our completed truth table. There's nothing more to it than that. Fairly simple. OK, so let's have a look at um, another example. Again, we could label our inputs A and B, label our intermediate output and our final output and have a column for each input and each output. So the combinations that A and B could be, be like so, both ones, A being one, B being zero, the reverse, and both being zero. So let's have a look at the not A first of all. So that not gate is attached to only the A, so we're only focusing on the A column and we're gonna invert each of those inputs. So we'd have zero, zero, one, one. And now what we're doing is we are going to and the B along with the output of that NOT gate. So focusing on the second and third column only, let's AND those two together. So 1 and 0 will produce a 0, 0 and 0 will produce a 0, 1 and 1 will produce a 1, and 0 and 1 will produce a 0. So in that last step we were ignoring A because A had already gone through the NOT gate, we we're only focusing on Q and B being the inputs to the AND gate. And this is the resulting uh, truth table. Here's another example. This time we've got three inputs and we've got two, uh, well, one intermediate output and one final output. So let's have a look at the combinations that we could have for the inputs. Now, you could study each of the combinations and, and really have a sort of headache trying to make sure that you've got every one. Or you could actually learn that there's a pattern to writing down the combinations. Now notice that when I wrote down A, 
I wrote down one 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 zero 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 zero. When I wrote down B, it was one one zero zero one one zero zero. And when I wrote down C, it was one zero one zero one zero one zero. Now, for three inputs, we know there's going to be eight um, out uh, possible combinations. With another input, it would double to be sixteen possible um, uh, combinations. For, so for every extra input you have, you're doubling your combinations. Um, but uh, in this case, we've got eight possible combinations. And doing that pattern will now produce every single combination that I can now investigate. So the first thing I want to do is I want to and A and B. So focusing only on the columns A and B, I'm going to and those. So when they're both one, the output is one. When one of those inputs is one and the other one zero, the outputs are zero. And when they're both zero, the outputs are zero as well. Now I've got Q going in to an OR gate along with C. So I'm going to focus on the C column and the Q column and I'm going to AND, uh, sorry, OR those um, inputs to the, uh, to the OR gate. So when both of them are one, the output would be one. If either one of the inputs is one, the output would be one. When both of them are zero, the output would be zero. So that one's uh, a, a one. You've got C being zero, Q being one, so the output there is one. At least one of them's one there, so the output will be one. That's a zero, one, zero, one, zero. So that is a completed truth table for that logic circuit. So tips, whenever you're drawing a truth table or writing out a truth table for a logic circuit, label the inputs on the circuit diagram, label the outputs, create a table with a column for each input and output, label the columns, so outputs uh, labeled in the form of an expression, and then place the combinations of different zeros and ones in the input column. So because there's two inputs, we know there's going to be four possible combinations. And I do the pattern 11001010. And then we work out the outputs for each column in turn. Like so. So as I said before, when you place the combinations of different zeros and ones in the input columns, there are patterns you can remember to help you. So two inputs has got four possible combinations. So when you're doing the first of those inputs, you can go one one zero zero, and then for the last column, it's one zero one zero. For three inputs, you've got eight, so double the amount of combinations, eight combinations, and you can do the pattern of for A being one 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 zero 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 zero, for B one one zero zero one one zero zero, and for C it's one zero one zero one zero one zero. And that's all the possible combinations there. So if there were four inputs, you would have 16 possible combinations. So in your A column, you would have eight ones and eight zeros. In the B column, it would be four ones, four zeros, four ones, four zeros, and so on and so forth. That's a nice quick way of finding all the combinations for your truth table. So the last thing is the binary logic circuit expressions. So in your exam, you'll be expected to be able to draw a diagram from an expression. So if you're given an expression P equals A and not B, what would we do? Well, this is my tip to you. What I would do is I would write down or consider all the inputs. So in that, this case, we've got A and B. I'd, write, I'd quickly sketch the gates. So I've got an AND gate and a NOR gate, not gate, sorry. And I've also got um, the output, which is P. And then I'd consider that expression. I'd think, OK, how many parts to that expression are there? Well, we've got the part inside the bracket and we've got the part outside the bracket. So there are actually two parts to this expression. So on the left hand side, I'd write down my inputs. On the right hand side, I would put down my output and then I would split my uh, work area where I'm drawing my diagram into two areas. So a bit for the bracket and a bit for the not bracket part of the expression. Now in maths, it's always brackets first and it's exactly the same in binary logic. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the bracket part first. I'm going to draw the not gate at B, so it's not B. I'm then in the second part of my drawing going to put down the AND gate, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to join them up. So here you can see that that is A AND the result of not B. 
So let's have another and look at another example. P equals not A and B. So what we've got is we've got A and B as the inputs, we've got the not gate and the AND gate, and we've got P as our output. So I draw, I write down my inputs, A and B, I write down my output, and I consider how many parts of this expression are there. Well, there's the bracket part and there's the outside bracket part. So two sections. I do the brackets first of all. So I put the AND gate. Um, so A and B are going into an AND gate. And then all I'm doing in my second part is I'm putting a NOT gate in there because that's outside the bracket. So that is NOT A and B. Let's have a look at this expression. So P equals A or B and C. So I've got three inputs, A, B and C. I've got output P. I've got two gates. I've got the AND gate and the OR gate. So I write down my inputs. I write down my output. I consider how many parts of this expression there are. Well, there's a bracket and there's an outside bracket part. So I've got two sections for my drawing. I'm going to do A or B. So I'm going to do the OR gate in the first section, like so. And then I'm going to put the AND gate in the second section and I'm going to join them up. So that is A or B, the result of A or B, um, being ANDed, if you like, with a C. So that's A or B and C. Here's another example. We've got A and B as the inputs, P as the output. We've got a NOT gate and an AND gate. Write down our inputs, write down our output on the right hand side. We've got two sections to this. The bracket comes first, so we're not A, and we are putting the AND gate in the second section. So that there is not A and B. Okay, let's have a look at this one here. So this is slightly different. We've got three sections here. We've got the brackets inside the bracket, we've got the bracket, and we've got the bit outside the bracket. So we've got three inputs, A, B, and C. We've got um, three gates, a NOT gate, an AND gate, and an OR gate, and we've got output P. So A, B, and C go on the left, P goes on, P goes on the right. We've got three sections to this expression. Brackets inside bracket first. So we do NOT B to begin with. Then we do our AND gate in the middle section. So we're ANDing the NOT B with a C. And then we're ORing at the end uh, the result of that with the A. We draw up our lines, so we've got not B going into an AND gate with C, and then we've got the result of that AND gate being ORed with the A. And there you have your lesson on binary logic.